Repair Clinic encourages you to perform this procedure safely. In this video, we will show one or more of these icons to alert you when to use caution. Before you replace the carburetor spacer on your snowblower, first make sure the engine has cooled. Next, remove the wire and boot from the spark plug to prevent the engine from accidentally starting. We recommend performing this procedure with no fuel in the tank. Your first step is to remove the retaining clip securing the chute control rod and pull the rod free. Now remove the retaining clip securing the support bracket pin and pull out the pin. Unthread the wing nut from the center gearbox mounting bolt. Lift the gearbox off of the support bracket and set the gearbox and chute assembly aside. Next, use a 3 8 inch socket to remove the bolts securing the belt cover. Pull the cover off. Now release the drive belt idler pulley tension spring. Use a half inch socket to remove the upper two mounting bolts securing the gearbox support bracket. Use a three quarter inch socket to remove the lower bolt. You can now remove the support bracket. Use a 10 millimeter socket or wrench to remove all of the mounting bolts securing the muffler cover. Lift off the cover. Next, remove both the choke knob and the throttle knob. Now use a Phillips head screwdriver to unthread the lower starter switch box mounting screw. Detach the primer line and the ignition switch wires. Use the 10 millimeter socket to remove the nuts threaded on the carburetor mounting posts. Pull the control panel free. Release the retaining clamps securing the fuel line to the tank and pull the line off. Now slide off the front choke plate gasket. Remove the choke plate itself and detach it from the choke linkage. Slide off the rear gasket. Detach the throttle spring and linkage from the carburetor and slide the carburetor off of the mounting posts. You can now remove the old carburetor spacer. Before you install the new carburetor spacer, confirm that the spacer gasket is in place on the mounting posts. Now slide on the new spacer and align the spark plug wire in the spacer tabs. Confirm that the intake gasket is aligned on the carburetor and slide the carburetor into place. Reconnect the throttle linkage and spring. Next, slide on the rear choke plate gasket. 
replace the choke plate and reattach the choke linkage. Slide on the front gasket. Reconnect the fuel line to the tank and secure it with the retaining clamp. Reposition the control panel making sure the choke plate stem protrudes through the hole in the panel and the breather tube connects to the air intake box. Align the primer line in the groove on the panel. Thread the nuts on the mounting posts and tighten. With the control panel in place, rethread the lower starter switch box mounting screw. Reattach the primer line and the ignition switch wires. Replace both the choke and the throttle knobs. Realign the muffler cover. Thread and tighten the bolts to secure. Now reposition the chute gearbox support bracket and replace the bolts. Reset the tension spring on the lower bolt. Replace the belt cover. Rethread the bolts and tighten. Reposition the chute assembly on the chute adapter as you realign the gearbox on the support bracket. Confirm that the center mounting bolt is in place in the gearbox housing. Then thread the wing nut on and tighten. Reinsert the support bracket pin and secure it with the retaining clip. Confirm that the holes in the gearbox coupler are facing straight up with the chute facing forward and that the chute control lever is at the 1 o'clock position. Now insert the rounded end of the chute control rod into the gearbox coupler and the hex end into the control coupler. Secure the rod with the retaining clip. Confirm that the chute has a full range of movement. Reattach the spark plug wire and boot. Refill the fuel tank and your snowblower should be ready for use.